Hi everybody, following on from the tour of Oakle Clifford then, um, which was well received, we're going to have a look round the dairy unit at home farm and the young sock accommodation. So um, we'll just start wandering down here to the main sheds. This concrete is laid about two, three months ago, or finished two or three months ago. Um, milking's finished, so it should be a bit quieter. The fans of the compressors are still making a bit of a racket, but generally it's going to be a bit quieter. Um, so the biosecurity hub there on the right is sort of the access point for students and, and farm visitors to come through. Uh, and they change into our wellies or boot covers in there, wash their hands, there's some facilities in there. Um, that's the entrance to the dairy, just through there. Uh, in there is the dairy office and the access to the parlour. We're just going to go to the calf unit first of all. Generally we try and encourage farm visitors to, if they're going to, if they want to see everything, they've got to go to the calves first for biosecurity purposes and then they can go to the cows but they can't go from the cows back to the calves. So as I say the cows have gone back out to grazing now after milking and it sounds like the scraper tractor is just cleaning up. So this is the access to the collecting yard for the milkers. We'll go and have a look at the young stock um, pulling have a shed and the handling unit over there afterwards but I think we'll just have a quick look in the calf unit first. So we've got a pretty good perimeter fence at the calf unit. Um, again for biosecurity purposes. Um, fairly recently we installed a loading chute here. Um, this is so if we do move heifers as youngsters or, or sell calves the haulier doesn't need to come into the calf unit and the calf staff don't need to leave and go up on a dirty ramp. So um, one rail's just popped off here. A bit overgrown, we haven't had any calves in there for a while now that we're on the autumn block. Um, so I'll get that tacked back on, but that's essentially what that is for. And, and even to the extent that um, the calves can be put in there and the passport's left in this changing shed and, and the hauliers essentially then can help themselves without contaminating the calf unit. So we put in this changing shed, as I say, um, so that anybody going into the calf unit changes into our wellies and our overalls. Um, you'll see the shed's empty at the moment because we haven't got any calves. They've all been, all the clothing's been taken away to be cleaned. They're white wellies and white overalls. Partly that shows up the dirt quite easily. Um, partly it's easy and distinctive to notice if you're outside the calf unit or nearby whether somebody's complying or not because they're in their white gear and and also it's it's less likely that somebody's going to pinch a pair of wellies or all the coats so we'll go in there now through the changing shed but as i say there's nothing in here at the moment we a bit of a spring clean in between blocks that's where you'd get changed come through here into a boot dip the feed bin there for the, the calf cudlets and we'll just go into the mixing room first. This building's only about six years old, five or six years old. We have made some modifications. So we bought this milk bar for when we don't have space in here for all the beef calves uh, or any black and white bulls. They can be in one of the other buildings and, and and this can be taken up with milk in it. Here's our milk taxi, and you'll see how that fits in with the rest of the system, but it makes mixing up the powder, the quant dispensing the quantities, and physically carting it around much easier. Here's all the apparatus, teats, chemicals, and so on, um, and a lot of buckets for a lot of calves. So that's the inside of the calf unit. We've got something quite nice for 2020. We ordered these from New Zealand. We've got about 80 branded calf coats. So 
So if we head round here to have a look at the igloos, this is the arrangement with the igloos and the verandas. You get a haw straw or hay rack on the outside and then yokes down the front where the buckets with teats go. And then a small water drinker and a concentrate trough on the outside. So again, these have been cleaned. They'll be pressure washed again before we restock in autumn onwards. But we've got six of, six of these set up with the verandas. I'm looking to try and get hold of some more. But we did a bit of extra concreting around there so that we've got the capability of putting some more up. Um, within the last month, we've put gale breakers up on this side of the building. We've got three on that side as well now. Did them about three years ago. But now it makes sort of a very warm, cosy environment inside there, which is where the newborns come initially for three, four days, maybe up to a week, depending on space, before they go into groups of 20 in the igloos. Little handling pens, holding pens, and weigh cell just through there. We, knew, we weigh every newborn calf so that we can monitor growth, rate, growth rates. This is our calf trolley. I saw this on a farm in Northern Ireland when I was visiting some dairies out there and thought it was really good. It's got a brake on the front. You can put two, maybe three calves inside it, um, keeps, them, keeps them clean, keeps it sterile, and you can put the calf in there, it won't jump out like with a wheelbarrow, and then we park it up outside the dairy office, go in and complete the paperwork, which is only two or three minutes and set some colostrum thawing, but it means that the calves are fine in there. We usually put straw or sawdust in the bottom. Um, and then here's our dehorning crate. It is possible to lock the calves into these yokes when they're feeding and so some vaccinations and other procedures can be done whilst they're in there but alternatively we've got the, the handling area as well. So this is the extra concreting that's been done. We've got the one spare igloo there so it's a case of looking at getting some more verandas as well and probably utilising this space. We did run some bull calves, gated off that grassy area there and put some more bull calves in there and that worked okay last year but obviously depends on the weather. And then we've got a ramp for the muck trailer. The ramp goes up to the perimeter of the fence and the muck trailer is on the outside of the calf unit so that the tractor driver can pick it up and take it without coming in and it means that the wheelbarrows can be emptied in the muck trailer again without any contamination either way. So that's the outside of the calf unit, which is, I'll just show you briefly inside where the newborns go. We've got about 120 cows due to calve in August this year. Um, so it will be putting quite a bit of pressure on this calf unit. As I say, it might be that bulls and beef calves go elsewhere. So we'll just have a look in here and then go out the front. This is where the individual pens are set up for the calves, solid sided with the open front for the concentrate bucket and the milk bucket and the same on this side and we usually have boot dips between all pens so coming into here there's usually a boot dip, going through that gate into the other side there's a boot dip and then to go outside as well. So it just gives you an idea of the environment in here for calves which is pretty good, it would be nice if it was even bigger but we're pretty happy with what we've got. So that's a, that's a summary of the calf unit. If anybody's got any questions, please post them and um, we'll walk up to have a look at the bullying heifer unit now. So as I say, that's the entrance to the collecting yard. We're going to have a look at the parlour shortly, but I just want to look at the bullying heifer shed first. This is our parlour exit route, the way the cows are coming now, past the handling area. You can just see the parlour on wash now. Everything's a bit quiet and a bit empty at the moment, but it's the best time to have five minutes to do this kind of thing. Too busy during carving, much as it'd be nice to do something. And there's the view back towards the calf unit. So it's not a very long way away from the dairy to move calves, but it's, it's far enough from a biosecurity point of view just to make things that bit easier. I'll just do this gate one handed. So this building, it's done. It's just done its first winter with cattle inside it. 
about 90 meters long. Uh, we've got an epoxy resin feed passage along the front with a slight incline and we've seen really good intakes with that. The locking yokes can be locked into individual or per two bays they're connected. Um, so you can lock one pen or you can lock the whole lot. But essentially we've designed the shed inside so that we've got individual pens which makes six pens in total or you could just run it as one yard. The front scrape passage has been grooved and the straw bedded area is smooth. High back water troughs with a bung at the bottom and we have got gale breakers on this gable end. There's lots of LED lighting. I might do a video at night when we've got some cattle in here and show you but it's fantastic for being well lit. Then we've got a gimbal camera up in the um, top of the shed there. You can just see that. That has thermal imaging capabilities but it's just a very good quality camera. The thermal imaging is good for spotting bullers although the dairy building's got the receiver and the antenna on the front of it for picking up any heats or unwell cows or whatever from the sense hub ear tags. So they're wearing the same system as the cows and it all comes centrally, just tells you whether it's a, a cow or a heifer. So the clamps are opposite this shed. We'll just have a quick look in the handling unit as well from the other end. As I say, there's a bit of first cut under there, second cut probably within the next day or so, and the slurry tower in the background. These clamps are pretty well empty and ready to go, with grass, maize, whatever. There's the keen and been dropped off, out of use at the moment. And then we generally use this earth bunded clamp at the end for muck. But I'm looking at sinking some steels in and putting panels down the side so that we can use that um, as well for forage. So as we come around the outside I'll just go up onto the viewing balcony and give you an idea of how the handling system works. We're trying to get set up with a volume washer in here so that we can have a spring clean of this as well. But this is the viewing balcony, it gives a really good um, view of the pens as well when there are cattle in here. So again, good for bullying, good for watching the behaviour. We've got the holding pens leading down to a curved race, solid sided with the stop board, and then the guillotine gate. Lots of squeeze points for people, cattle run down the chute and into the race. Um, it's set up with a Bluetooth reader so all the EID tags are picked up and the weights are simultaneously attributed to the animal that's in the crush. So it's quite quick for us and removes the need for a clipboard and pen and paper. But that gives you a good overview of what we've got for handling cattle. But of course with the locking yokes we can TB test and do a lot of the stuff through there anyway. So I think we'll head back round now, have a look in the cow accommodation and the milking parlour. So just heading round past the feed store now. As you can see, a lot of the roller doors, the gale breaker doors, are a bit tired and damaged in places. So we're looking at replacing these, ideally as soon as possible. Um, keep a lot of the birds out from going in there. Um, and keep that a bit more biosecure. We'd also like to raise the height of all of them. Two are suitable for tipping an arctic in, but these other four are pretty well too low, so if we're going to be doing the doors anyway, it might be a good time to just trim some of that timber off. But at the moment, the feed store's not being used at all. So um, that's sort of the next plan, but you can hear there's a couple of pigeons in there looking at the ground maze, but that's as far down as we can get the door at the moment. Um, so just coming around here, this is a little bit of fresh concrete that we've laid. Um, you can just see some buttressing we had to do to the silage clamps, which we're just starting to lean. This is our slurry tower. Uh, 
and then as we come round, we'll have a look at the cow housing. We put up this little push-out bunker. We push out the cow's food seven days a week when they're on a TMR, and it gives us somewhere great to push to. We can then weigh it, and invariably it's fed to beef cattle, finishing, finishing cattle, but it means we can weigh it and monitor it to adjust the cow rations up or down if we need to. But you can either go back through the keen and all the tractor drive will estimate it. Um, so we've just put down an epoxy resin coating in here. It was amazing just how coarse the concrete had got. Um, you can just sort of get an idea, but it was virtually like a cobbled street once it had been pressure washed off. But that's how it looks now and it'd be really interesting to see what that does to the cow intakes. The fans are off at the moment and this is our carving gate and carving pen in there for ready for August. So again, this straw yard's been cleaned out and we're just working on cleaning off the cow beds with a pressure washer. Quite a lot of the lime and sawdust has created a bit of a coating on the top layer of the mattress, so we're looking at trying to get that off. But we've got, about 200, we've got 297 cubicles plus the straw yards, so there is quite a bit of space. Three tipping groups per cow, sorry, three tipping troughs per cow group, and there's three cubicle groups, so we can keep them separately, and we generally run a separate heifer group, milking heifers. So we'll just head round here, and this is our, or last year was split into a calving yard and a fresh yard, so as the animals carved, you could just post them through to the other side, and it was very much a job that one person could do on their own. I suspect with the number we've got calving in a block this year, it'll probably all need to be fresh cow space, and all the transition cows will be in the yard that we've just come from. Here's our feed pushing robot, the GEA Throne, or FR1. Four cubicles with the static cow brushes, and again the looking rather dusty at the moment but the epoxy coating there. At the moment we've just got a neck rail for the feed face. I would like to get some locking yokes in due course. And then you can see the pile although the lights are off at the moment. So our quad bike and sprayer which has been doing quite a lot of spot spraying. And we actually just got the fans put back on this uh, the blades put back on this fan this morning haven't been down for maintenance so that gives an idea of the dairy buildings um, and we're just going to have a look at the milking parlour here's the view of the milking parlour from the viewing balcony it's a 3232 Delaval rapid exit milking parlour it's about 18 years old so we're hoping all being well that this summer we'll be replacing it with a GA rapid exit basically going into the same footprint and we're ready to go, we're just waiting on um, a few issues incurred basically as a result of the pandemic. So you can see the collecting yard and backing gate there in the distance, come through the double sheet of doors when they're out at grazing. There's a um, trough in the back right hand corner with rock salt in for the cows to mess around with before they come in. And then this time of the year we've got one person in the parlour but during term time there would be to a full-time member of farm staff and a, and a student usually. Rubber matting for the milkers. The new parlour is going to have in-parlour feeding. We don't have issues with cows coming into the parlour, but if we don't put the functionality in in the first place, it's going to be difficult to retrofit. We're also working on the basis that our autumn block cows could go out earlier in the spring, but some of those cows that are still giving 40, 45, up to 60 litres won't be able to do that off grass alone whereas actually if we can individually feed buffer feed without having to do a TMR and load up a, mat, a wagon and have a silage clamp open then that will facilitate that. There's rubber mats where the cows stand while they're being milked. We just recently put it in for the, for the front feet and then two strips on the parlour exit as well where the cows are doing that uh, two series of 90 degree turns to leave and to go back to their cubicles. So again, any questions about the parlour, please post and ask, and otherwise I hope you enjoyed the tour. I'll look to do one of the other farms later this week or perhaps next week.